Isaiah chapter 17. The burden of Damascus. That's exactly where Paul was heading. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. Second Kings chapter 16. Second Kings 16. King 16, verse 9. <clears throat> and the king of Assyria hearkened unto him. For the king of Assyria went up against Damascus and took it and carried the people of captive to Kerr and slew Risen. There it is. That happened about 632 BC. Isaiah writes BC 726. That's 94 years. God's prophecy is always right. And then the city is re-edified where, where Paul's going to it. The city of Aurora are forsaken. They shall be for flocks, animals, which shall lie down and none shall make them afraid. <laughs> There's no humans there. It's gone. Just place for livestock. The fortress also shall cease from Ephraim. And the kingdom from Damascus, and it's no more a kingdom, and the remnant of Syria, oh, that's, that makes still news today, Syria, they shall be as the glory of the children of Israel, saith the Lord. So, and in that day, there's that expression, it shall come to pass that the glory of Jacob, Israel, shall be made thin, skinny. And the fatness, we know what fatness is, of his flesh shall wax lean. So, Jacob, Israel, they're plump and juicy. And God says, nope, it's not going to last. Famines, war, drought. And it shall be as when the harvestmen gather the corn. Now, that corn is not the corn of America. And I know it's going to say, the corn and reapeth the ears with his arm. That's wheat. That's not the, the corn that we have on the cob today. That's wheat and barley. And it, ears with his arm, that's, that's the picture of bringing in the sheaves. He's going out there, grabs a whole sheaf of it and can carry it. And shall be as he that gathereth ears in the valley of Rephaim. Gonna be not much. Not much. I mean, with what he goes out and gathers, he can put in his arms. That's not much. Yet gleaning grapes shall be left in it. After the grapes have been harvested, what's been left over? Grapes. Not much. Usually when they go through and they and they're reaping the grapes, I mean they clean it out. Those gleaning of the grapes would be like with Ruth and the, and the, and the homeless and the, and the poor would go allow. As the shaking of an olive tree. Two or three berries. That's not much. That's the first time berries shows up in the Bible. On the top of the utmost bowl or bowl. You know, it's way up there. I'm not going to bother. Go get it. Four or five in the outmost fruit, fruitful branches thereof. It's not much, saith the Lord God of Israel. Again, we're talking about that remnant. And that remnant is predominant in the tribulation period as you go into the end of the tribulation period and when Jesus comes. But there was a small remnant in, in Babylon. At that day. Not in that day, at that day, shall a man look to his maker, capital M. Now, for Israel, it's twofold, maker. God made the nation of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God made man. It's creation. And his eyes shall have respect to the Holy One of Israel. Again, that's Israel. One day. 
And that's the millennium. And that holy one will be Jesus Christ. He shall not look to his altars, the works of his hands. That's not the altar in the temple. Those are altars plural to the gods. You know, can I bring it to the church? Every church has it has altars that are made by hands. Come to the altar. I don't see that in the New Testament, altars. I see that in the Old Testament, it's false gods. I see, if you're going to look at the temple of God, I see one altar that the, the men in Israel were to go to the people. And if a Christian is to have an altar, it's one altar. And the Bible says we are seated in heavenly places, not a church building. And we make the church, you know, this is the only church to come to that God will bless. And this altar, no. I can get right with God in the automobile. I can get right with God in my bed. I can get right with God in my living room. I can get right with God. Because I am seated in heavenly places. The ultimate altar is before God the Father and God the Son. Again, what do you do with underground churches in countries where you can't have a church? What do you do when, when you got people, and I know this circumstance, you got people living in a place and there's no King James Bible believing churches. And if there are King James Bible believing churches, they're not living right. What do you do then? I've talked to many Christians. The church they have, it's just foul. It's just, but that's the only thing they got. And we'll read in Jeremiah, as many as, as the streets in Jerusalem. Well, as many as the streets in Daytona Beach, there's a lot of churches. I bet you they all have altars too. And when I'm preaching, oh, you know, it's unhated because because it's my income. Well, I read a lot to see in church days that Jesus Christ is standing outside the church door knocking. And in America and throughout the world, what do you do now when the governments, plural, have closed the churches down? What do you do now? You have not trained your sheep. Because the Bible says if a woman is to have a question, she's to ask her husband at home. And in this lag of churches being closed in COVID-19, and, and we have not trained our men to train our children to raise them in the Lord in our house when we've been isolated. With the isolation, and there are nations right now today where the nation has been shut down. You are indoors. I wonder how many Christian families are having service on the first day of the week. With the husband, the leader of the church, where the two or three are gathered together in my name. Uh, but see, we made the church building, we made the altar, we made the pews, the church. That's not so. And we got people go out there and mow the lawns and have, have pretty gardens and all that, but they don't go out and tell people about Jesus. It's plain and simple. You need a preacher like me to stand up and preach the truth. He alters the work of his hands, man's hands. Neither shall respect that which their fingers have made either the groves or the images. And I told you, I've been in churches where there's a grove. And around the pulpit where the pastor is, there, there's artificial or real trees and all that. And, and the pastor, the center figure, is right in the middle of those bushes. I, I went to a Catholic church one day. You go down the stairs, lower stairs, and to the right, up against the stone wall, was the grove. There's a church we pass on, on, on the way to our church, and it has a grove with their with their sign and everything. And they got a cross there and you know benches and all that. That's a grove. And God's against that grove, and even if that grove is at your church. 
Images. I've been in churches where there's been images. I could bring you to a church, not that I want to go back to Connecticut, but I could bring you to a church where there's stained glass windows and pictures of black Jesus and black apostles. That ain't biblical. I was in a church one time. They had a plaque on the wall dedicated to the person that, that founded this church. That's not. I thought Jesus Christ founded the church. Well, you know, you're, you're not until you're a member of this church. I thought I was a member of the church when I got Christ and received Jesus Christ as my Savior and the Holy Spirit came and dwelt with me. I thought that was a member of the church. I know I'm getting hard, but got to have some hard preaching because it ain't happening today. In that day, there it is again, shall his strong cities be as a forsaken bow. Even the strong defense cities are going to be broken down. You realize America, the strong nation of America, and we're coming up to tomorrow. The inauguration of our new president. Our new president. I said our new president. Now, I'm neither Democrat, I'm neither Republican. I preach the gospel. You realize our, our Washington, D.C. is now surrounded by troops, military officials, a strong city, and yet we got to have the military step in and to keep order. Germany was a, was a first-rate nation. England was a first great nation, powerful cities. And they were destroyed during World War II. And the uppermost branch, which they left. Now, you see what we're talking about? We've been talking about in uh, Isaiah 17, verses 6. The gleanings, the, gr the grapes, the ears. He's talking about the nation of Israel in their cities. Ain't going to be much left. Which they left because the children of Israel, and they shall be desolation. Because Israel sinned against God. And Israel is God's people. And shall not the judgment of God begin in the house of the Lord? What do you think is going to happen to nations that reject God and are sinning against God? If God is judging his own people and he's going to send uh, uh, Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, in the time of Jeremiah to come in and wipe it out. And Christians and Baptists today, oh, we're going to have a Republican president for the rest of our lives. We're going to have the nation of America for the rest of our lives. Not when they're sinning against God. Not when you put more faith in a political party and in a vaccine rather than God and not repenting of your sins, not putting God back in the schools and not putting the Bible back in the courthouse. You're not going to have America stand. That's exactly what happened to Judah in the time of Jeremiah. Well, we got to go back to worshiping the queen of heaven. And they got sacked. If God's going to judge his people, and he has judged his people, in Jeremiah, he will judge the nations. Because thou has forgotten the God of thy salvation, talking to Israel. And you can take 1710 of Isaiah and you can apply that to the church age today. The church has forgotten the salvation of God through Jesus Christ. And they're going after the worldly means. They're going after the carnal means. And they're going after the government. And they're not seeking God, Jesus Christ. And they got programs instead of the Bible. And they got movies instead of, of evangelism. Revelation chapter 3. Thou and hast not been mindful of the rock. Paul said that rock is Jesus. Of thy strength. What about God? Who cares? 
And they'll say that in Jeremiah, Lord willing, when we get to Jeremiah, the queen of heaven. What about God, Jehovah? What about God that took you out of Egypt? They don't care about him. He doesn't see what we're doing. And that's said through Isaiah, and that's said through Jeremiah, and that's said through Ezekiel. God don't see it. And that's the attitude of the churches today. We can do whatever we want to do. We're rich. We're wonderful. We're great. Hallelujah. God says, you're miserable, naked, poor, blind, and you make me sick. Therefore shalt thou, therefore shalt thou plant pleasant plants, and shalt set it with strange slips. That slips is plant clipping or cuttings. That's almost when Jesus said the tares among the wheat. You got the wheat, but there's other clippings in there. You see, what you get out of the Gospels, what you get out of the New Testament comes out of the Scriptures. But who reads the Old Testament? In the day shall thou make thy plant to grow. And that plant is Israel, a vine, a vineyard. And in the morning shall thou make thy seed to flourish. And the harvest shall be a heap in the day of grief. And of desperate sorrows. That's not the laws of reaping and sowing. And we read earlier this week. The, 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 the vine. When they go and pick the grapes. And they're making the wine. It's a celebration. It's a music. It's a time of great joy. Harvest. Isaiah says nope. You sinned against God. You forgot about God. Listen, this is the time coming to the Antichrist. We don't thank God for what we got. We waste in America the food that God's given us, and we expect God to fill our grocery store. We get upset because we don't have toilet paper. Wait, the God said there'll be no more food. Why isn't there any food? Because we don't thank God. On the one day that this government said, we're going to establish a Thanksgiving day to God, we hurry everything up so we can put everything away, so we can go to Black Friday and spend money what we don't have. And the, the day of Thanksgiving, we watch a bunch of idiots fighting over a pigskin. That's thanksgiving to God. George Washington said thanksgiving to God the Father, God the Creator. And you got a bunch of imbeciles fighting over a football. I, I, I got the whole thing you can do with football. You want to solve the football problem? Give everybody a football. They'll be all happy. And stores are open on the day where to give thanks to God. We're not thanking God, we're not repenting to God, but we expect God's blessings. Thanksgiving is supposed to be a time of thanking God for what we have. And then Christmas is what we don't have and, and covet. It's amazing, I've been told that, that Christmas and Easter are the church holidays. What happened to Thanksgiving? I had a pastor tell me, Christmas and Easter are church holidays. I've got witnesses to that. Where's Thanksgiving? Uh-huh. That's one of the things I preach at the farmer's market. That's my daughter. You got all this fruits and vegetables. You don't thank God for them. You don't thank God for the, for the food. You don't thank God for the money. And you don't thank God that you're breathing. I was listening to a preacher this morning. I, I, I put on every day a, a preacher to hear a preacher. And he said, you know what? When was the last time we ever thanked God that we have our sanity? We're not locked up. We're not in a rubber room. We're not in a padded room. We're not with a stray jacket. When was the last time we thanked God that we're able to think? 
When do we ever thank God that we can rebel against the government, though the Bible says we're not supposed to, and the ruler of our government doesn't chop our heads off? You know, uh, Nehemiah. Nehemiah was afraid before the king because he was sad. King says, Nehemiah, why are you sad? Oh, no. Yeah, but we Bible-believing Christians, when, when Paul tells us we're to honor the king, and Peter says we're to pray for the king, I hate that man! I hate that much! Uh-huh. And then you want God to bless you when you violate the scriptures. Where are you getting all this out of Isaiah? I don't know. The Lord's got me on fire. In the day shalt thou make thy plant Israel to grow, and in the morning shalt thou make thy seed to flourish. But the harvest shall be a heap in the day of grief and of desperate sorrow. Where did all the tares come from? And what's the average from the tares and from the wheat? Many shall go the broad way that leads to destruction, and few shall go through the straight gate. That's woe to the multitude of many people. <laughs> multitude of many people. Multitude means many people. To add to it, many people. Which maketh a noise like the noise of the sea. Now, I didn't look that up. Revelation. Sometimes I, I go to look things up and I forget to. Revelation. Chapter 17. And verse 15. Well, Revelation, 1, Revelation 17. 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show you thee the judgment of the great whore, bad word, God, that sitteth upon many waters. Verse 15. He says to me, The waters which thou sawest, verse 1, where the, where the whore sitteth are many peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Let's go back over to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 17 verse with verse chapter 12 uh, chapter 17 verse 12 woe unto the multitude of many people which maketh noise like the noise of the seas run that reference to revelation and to the rushings of nations isn't that what that, don't tell me I'm full of it. Don't tell me I'm a liar because my scripture lines up with the scripture. I've studied the word of God. And you call on me, I'll, I'll put your name. But God shall rebuke them when he puts that whore down. And they shall flee afar off and shall be chased as the chaff that's the waste of the wheat of the mountains before the wind. And that wind is, has to do with the tribulation period too, you know. Man, there's many words to highlight yourself when it comes to the tribulation and, and the second advent is wind in that day, the latter and early rain. Like a rolling thing. <laughs> That's a tumbleweed. That's the tumbleweed before the whirlwind, Daniel chapter 2. We're looking at the tribulation period. Man, if God can get 94 years before the destruction of Damascus, verse 1, man, many, 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 many years to the tribulation period can God get that scripture right. And behold, at even time, trouble. You mean Jacob's trouble? And before the morning, pictures the second advent, he is not. This is the portion of them that spoil us, Israel. And as a lot of them that rob us, the Antichrist, the nations. God is not all finished with the, with the 
nation of Israel. Now he's going to chastise them, and he's put them on the shelf right now. But the whole motive for Jesus Christ to come back and set up his kingdom is to have that kingdom under the nation of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. To be seated on the throne of David, not the throne of, of America, not the throne of the queen or the king of England. Not the throne of any dictator, but the king of David throne. 